Hey guys, Tom once again for another episode of Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist. So let's see what happened around here today. Um, we'll get back to that. Um, Rafa worked today on the Turquoise 64 and got quite a bit done. Um, he started working on the, uh, the cargo door mechanism. So you can see the mechanism installed here and then He's got the uh, the upper and lower rods, which are what actually latch into the into the body to uh, close the door. Uh, we didn't have or don't have the mechanism yet for the for the front cargo door, um, so we will get that and then install it. Wolfsburg West doesn't actually have the rods um, for this one, similar to similar to to these. Um, don't know if they're out of stock or they just don't carry those. I don't remember. But regardless, we should be able to get some of those from one of the other local V-Dub shops. So not a big deal. Uh, let's see. So those went in. And um, the other main thing that happened was this car got a lot of Dynamat put in it. So you can see it here in the cargo doors and you'll have to take my word for it but it's behind that panel there which by the way that panel is not installed but it's just kind of leaning there but there is dynamat all behind there in the rear hatch um i he hasn't quite got to the front doors yet oh i take it back he got the passenger front door didn't quite get to the driver front door but uh yeah this stuff is killer for sound deadening uh weighs a lot and it's expensive but works really well so the owner likes to have his tunes in the car his music and wants to you know not hear road noise and bus noises and stuff like that so he uh, he really likes having dynamat in his buses to keep him nice and quiet so yeah that's kind of the main things that happened here on this one today so why don't we wander over see what else happened so uh, Jacob was off today so didn't really do anything on his car the 61 verts were pretty much waiting for the the new tires which will probably be here later this week and then the gas tank which is going to be boiled and and coated uh, so maybe next week for that I don't know so this one's pretty much done at this point as far as the parts we actually have to put on it so let's talk about this because this thing is looking killer so i started yesterday fitting the uh, the tin and i finished it up today and it was a giant pain in the ass um i do have a tech tip video i think it is um on some of the things I do to fit this uh, MP, AKA Chinese uh, tin to a motor and get it to fit pretty nice. I mean, it's not as good as OEM tin, but um, you know, with some effort, you can get it to fit pretty nice. Um, typically what happens is the fan shroud, the bottom of the fan shroud is, is too uh, too tall or too sticks down too much which basically raises the whole fan shroud and so when you're going to test these what you got to do is you got to do test it with the uh, alternator or generator in bolted up and sitting on the stand because what happens is before you start trimming and massaging this thing and you take this assembly and you set it down it's basically sitting on the case here but then there'll be like a eighth or a quarter inch gap between the body of the alternator or generator and the actual like saddle that it sits in here. So until those are actually like sitting one on the other, you got to pretty much just keep going and trimming along here. Uh, anyway, check out my video. I talk about a lot of this stuff. Um, the other area that may need a lot of attention is where the intake manifolds go in, especially if you're running like big dual port intake manifolds that are made for uh, for dual carburetors that are like big beef style or whatever they're very thick on the top here for um, for porting and so you got to do a lot of work on this tin here to get that to to clear those manifolds so yeah just lots of 
trimming and you know beating with a mallet and bending with pliers and stuff like that but it all fits nice now i'm happy with it and so it will all go off to powder coating it's pretty much going to get powder coated this exact same color like a semi-gloss black um and but it will be much more durable than this cheap paint that they use on here and you know all the areas that i cut it and stuff are raw metal now so you know needless to say the whole thing needs to be coated one way or the other and powder coating is a way to go this bus is getting heat so we got uh, high flow heater boxes a set of those for it and um, stainless steel i think it's let's see inch and five eighths um a1 uh, inch and five eighths Ooh, look at that a1 there's a famous little badge there these guys are the best yeah so inch and five eighths um, header sidewinder style and then muffler all made for a bay window and then the heater boxes to go with it and then the intake manifolds are idf style there's going to be dual throttle bodies so a throttle body on each side which pretty much look like idf carburetors um, i don't have the throttle bodies yet or they would be sitting on here but i did need to get the manifold so thanks aj if you happen to see this for getting those for me aj over at low bucket he's the one who's supplying the fuel injection system i did get the manifolds from him already though so i could uh, do all the trimming and stuff i needed to on the tin so yeah this tin is pretty much done and ready to go to powder coating um probably drop that off later this week uh the other minor thing that happened on this bus today is i put new weather strip on these flaps so these are the ones oh, let's walk around the front here so the fresh air system on bay windows comes in through a vent right here and then the way that's controlled is those flaps that you just saw basically fit in here and then they hinge open and close depending on if you want airflow or not so new weather strip or weather seals on those are seals whatever you want to call them uh, glued on with weather strip adhesive so those are ready to go and then i also managed to finally get the parts that i was missing for the wiper assembly i got a donor wiper assembly here that i'm probably going to use the arms off it because they have these literally impossible to find uh, bushings on them and nobody seems to make these so i'm gonna use these arms that have the bushings in because the bushings don't also seem to come out as far as i can tell i'm afraid that they're gonna break if i take them out so i'm gonna use these arms that i've cleaned up um, they don't look quite as nice as the ones that i had zinc plated but it's all up underneath the dash nobody sees it and it'll work beautifully so yeah, wiper assembly is going to go together and then I can install it um, up under the dash there. And I talked to Ed over at OC Westy, who's working on recovering the dash for this car. He's hoping to have it later this week or early next week. He ran into some snags with another unrelated project. And so it's taking him longer than he thought. But once I get that dash back, then I can really dive into all this under dash mechanism and stuff here and the wiring. And at that point, this bus is really gonna start moving along fast because the motor is also done. Powder coating will be back. Um, you know, I'll probably have that late next week or something so I can do final assembly of the motor. Transmission is with Leo right now. He's doing some uh, paint and polish detail on it. so. Yeah, this thing's going to come together pretty fast here, hopefully starting in the next week or two when uh, some of these major parts um, are ready to go. So that's it for today, guys. I should mention that tomorrow evening there will not be a Day in the Life of Vintage Classic Specialist episode, me and my family. Um, I'm taking the day off and we're going to go to Universal Studios and uh, enjoy the day there. So I will be back again in the shop on uh, Friday. So sorry about that, guys. Uh, but I will see you again in a couple days on Friday. Thanks for watching. Bye.